Can you bid on your competitor's brand name in Google Ads? Yes. Should you? Definitely. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps to set up a search campaign targeting your competitor's brand name inside of Google Ads. Now, full disclosure, it's not against the rules to advertise for your competitor's brand name. You just can't include their brand name in your actual advertisement. Another thing that you need to consider is it can be a bit expensive, but if you're willing to spend a few extra bucks, let's dive right in. Oh, one more thing. If you'd like to save thousands of dollars inside of your Google Ads account, make sure to grab my free PPC cost-cutting cheat sheet. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash cheat sheet, and I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, friends, so let's go ahead and create a campaign from scratch targeting your competitor's brand name in Google Ads. So right now I'm in the main dashboard of Google Ads, and what I'm going to do is select Create Campaign, and then I'm gonna select New Campaign, and here you're greeted with a lot of campaign objectives. Um, and depending on which one you select, you're limited with the actual campaign types that you can run. So typically what I'll do is I'll select create a campaign without a goals guidance to be able to see all the options available here. And the one that we want is a standard search campaign. So it's here on the top left. I'm gonna select that. And here you have the ability to select your conversion goals for your campaign. So if you already have those set up, you can select which ones you want as the conversion for this campaign. And then you can select continue. And then it asks, select the results that you want from this campaign. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and select website visits and I'm gonna input my domain, which is scottredgate.com. Here's where you can name the campaign. And so I'd recommend having a name that's consistent with your other campaign names inside your account. And so for this one, I might type in competitor brand name. And then we can select continue. So now it says bidding. What would you like to focus on? You've got conversions, conversion value, clicks, or impression share. For this type of campaign, I'm gonna select clicks. And the reason for it is because I want to set a maximum cost per click bid limit because when you are targeting your competitor's brand name in search campaigns, it can be quite expensive. And the reason why your competitor's brand name is expensive is because one of the key components in ad rank, which is how high you can show up in the ad results in the Google search page, um, one of the elements is quality score and ad relevance and landing page experience. And when you're bidding on your competitor's brand name, that user is specifically looking for that competitor by name. So unfortunately, you're not gonna get the benefit of having a high quality score for this ad. And as a result, you're gonna have to pay an arm and a leg. So I like to select clicks for what I'm gonna focus on. And then you can select a maximum CPC bid limit. So input here what you're comfortable, the maximum amount that you'd be willing to pay for a competitor's uh, brand name click. And so let's say $5 here. Now this number could be a lot higher depending on what type of niche you're in. And then here is customer acquisition. I'm not gonna select bid for new customers only. Um, I'm gonna have this open to both new and returning customers. Then I'm gonna select next. And so now you have the networks that you can choose from. You've got the search network and it asks if you want to include the Google search partners. I have a whole video on this, but the quick version is no, I wouldn't recommend including the Google search partners at the beginning of a brand new campaign. And then I never recommend um, having the display network and the search network combined. And so I always uncheck include display network. So um, I select search network, do not include the search partners and do not include the display network. Here is where you can select your location. So I've got United States um, since I'm based in the United States, but you can, depending on maybe your local service business, you can input your city or your state or whatever. Languages, I'm in the US, uh, English is the language, so I'm gonna keep that. All right, so now you've got audience segments, and so you can select this, and it's not a necessity, but what you can do is you can actually add audiences in here in observation mode, okay? And so let's say that these are all uh, relevant audiences for me. You can browse and find um, 
with Google's data, um, or you could even input some of your own audiences based on your own data. Um, but what you can do here is you can add audiences and then you can actually track the results of that audience within your campaign. So for example, I selected an in-market audience for education, all right? And so once this campaign's up and running, I'm actually going to be able to see the stats of that group within my audience. And then with that information, you can actually make bid decisions. So potentially you could bid up on that audience or bid down on that audience. But when you have it in observation mode, um, you are not doing anything to the campaign. You're not isolating it to only show to these audiences or anything like that. You're truly just monitoring the stats of it. So it's not a necessity for this type of campaign, but go ahead and find um, audiences that are relevant to you if you have the time and then input them in observation mode so that you can monitor the stats. All right, so. And so here are some advanced settings in terms of ad rotation or start and end dates or ad schedule. So if your business is only open for particular hours and you only wanna show ads during that time, you can select that here, um, but I'm not gonna fool with that right now. All right, so now we are at the ad group stage. And what I'm going to say here, let's say your competitor, let's just for example purposes call them competitor A. All right, so I just renamed the ad group. And now I'm presented with this new screen that's recent in 2024 for you can get suggestions for your ad based on Google's AI, which is powered by Gemini. And so I will select help create my ad. And so when you do that, this option over here on the right side pops up and it asks what URL should this ad link to? Obviously you would have your domain and then it's using AI to actually write a description of um, the product or service you want to advertise. Um, and so read through that, make it sure it makes sense and then you can select help create my ad. All right, so it's actually gonna provide keyword recommendations, but remember, the purpose of this campaign specifically is to advertise for your competitor's brand name, all right? And so I'm not gonna include any of that. This is the section where you enter your keywords, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna input this starting bracket, and then I'm gonna put competitor A, and then I'm gonna close the bracket here, and that signifies exact match. And so I have another video on the differences between broad phrase and exact match. Uh, they, de they do not behave like they did five to 10 years ago. But a quick description of what they do is they signal to Google how broad the search terms you're willing to show for compared to the keyword that you chose or how narrow the search terms compared to the keyword that you selected. And so since this is a campaign targeting a competitor's brand name, what I wanna do is I wanna have the search terms that we appear for be as closely matching to that competitor's brand name as possible. And so inside these brackets, you'd input what your competitor's name is or the brand name that you wanna appear for. And so you just do um, a starting bracket, input your competitor's brand name, and then you close it out. All right, and you could input several variations of your competitor's brand name if you would like, um, and you could use exact match for each of them. And so once you do that, we have our keyword selected, and now this would be the step where you actually create your advertisement. Now remember, we selected the option to have Google's AI powered by Gemini help us create our ad. And so a lot of the stuff is already going to be filled in. Okay, so I go down here to the headlines. It says Scott Redgate, PPC and SEO agency. I am not an agency, so it got that one wrong. So let's actually just remove that. Um, online marketing coach, that is accurate. Online marketing agency, that isn't accurate. And so my recommendation here is if you selected to have Google's AI assist with your ad creation, go through, make sure that all the headlines and descriptions make sense. Um, if there's some that do not, make sure to remove them, delete them from the mix. And I would really recommend taking some time in making these descriptions and these headlines even a little bit better. And so if the AI did a solid job, wonderful, continue to the next one. But there's going to be a handful of them that just missed the mark, so make sure that you take the time uh, and correct those ones. And so now as we scroll down, we're getting into business name and logos, site links, call outs. These are formerly called ad extensions, but that now they're classified as ad assets 
in Google Ads. And so I would recommend taking the time and creating site links, creating call outs, um, which will essentially make your advertisement appear even larger on the search results page if Google chooses to show those ad assets along your traditional headlines and descriptions. And the reason I'd recommend doing that is because as I said before, your quality score is not going to be great for this. And so one of the elements of the quality score is expected click-through rate. And so if Google is anticipating for you to have a lower click-through rate, one way to help offset that is to make your ad appear larger. And so typically by including some of these things like site links and call-outs, you're making your ads larger and you're making them a little bit more compelling to click. All right, and so I'd recommend doing that. I'm not going to do that for uh, for the sake of this video, um, but let's go ahead and select next here. And so Google's gonna provide a recommended budget for your campaign, input what you're comfortable spending, then we're gonna select next. And it did. And so now I'm gonna scroll down here, make sure everything looks good for what I just input. Let me go back up to the budget. That didn't take for some reason. And now it worked. So I'm just going through, everything looks good here. And now if you're ready, select publish campaign and then you will enter the approval process for the keywords and the ads. So it could be a day or so until your ads start to show, um, but typically it'll be just a few hours. And so one thing to note, we did input a maximum CPC with this campaign, and there's always a chance that that's well below the minimum bid that Google would have us um, appear for our competitor's brand name. And so if you have this campaign, everything's approved, and you come back in a few days and you're not getting any impressions whatsoever, it might be a signal that if you want to still show for your competitor's brand name, you're going to need to up that max CPC bid. Or if you are willing to spend your full budget, one thing that you could do is just remove that max CPC entirely for a short period of time to truly see what you would have to pay to appear for your competitor's brand name regularly. All right, so in summary, you can show up for your competitor's brand name by creating a search campaign targeting their brand name as an exact match keyword. It can be a little bit expensive to do, but if you have a few extra bucks and you have enough budget, I do recommend doing it. Why? Because if they are a direct competitor to you, you already know that the audience that's searching for them by name is qualified and may be interested in your product or service. But hey, I hope this video was helpful for you. Could you do me a favor? Could you like this video and subscribe to my channel to give me a little momentum in YouTube's algorithm? Take care.